it's finally time for the next chapter in the miniature retro gaming PC saga. And of course, no gaming PC is complete without a matching monitor. So in this video, it's time to complete the setup with a monitor that's just as mini and just as retro as the mini retro gaming PC tower itself. So stick around to find out how I made this mini CRT style monitor and what it's like to use. But first, a little bit of recap. The first video I ever uploaded on this channel was one about fixing up and turning an old discarded firewall into a Windows 98 PC. Two months later I followed up with a 3D printed tower case that could house the motherboard and a sound card and that were designed to look like a miniature 90s PC. I was mostly happy with how that turned out, but I kind of felt like the illusion of a miniature system broke down when the case was put next to a normal size monitor. So the natural next step was to design a matching miniature CRT monitor to go with it. So that's exactly what I did, and here's how I went about it. First I ordered this 8 inch IPS panel with a 4x3 aspect ratio from AliExpress. Well actually I ordered two of them for a good measure. The panels came with a driver board and a control PCB with some buttons as well as a little remote control. When I had received the LCDs I started working on the housing design. I began by measuring the panel and creating a front bezel around it. Then I added holes for the control panel buttons as well as some mounting extrusions that could hold the control panel PCB. Once I had a front bezel that could fit the LCD panel and control buttons, I moved on to the design of the rear housing. To get the CRT-like shape, I just extruded backwards from the front bezel to make a somewhat oblong cube. And then I drew a profile and cut it out from the side and the top. I then applied fillets to all the edges to make them rounded and once I was happy with the overall shape I used the shell tool to make it hollow. Then I went on to design a mounting construction for the driver board. I didn't want the front and the back of the housing to end up being connected by a delicate ribbon cable that may risk breaking when taking the device apart. So I wanted to have the driver board mounted on the front part where the LCD panel would be attached. But I still needed to expose the edge of the driver board for easy access to the power and HDMI connectors, so I came up with this shelf design. The shelf extrudes from the bottom of the frame and creates a flat surface for the driver board to be mounted on. I then made a cutout on the bottom of the back housing that will allow the ports of the driver board to be accessible from the rear. In order to make this arrangement easier to print, I created a separate mounting plate for the driver board PCB that can be glued onto the shelf. The front and back parts of the housing then slots together by overlapping sidewalls and is held together by four screws, one in each corner. So then, when I had a somewhat viable design, I printed the parts and then assembled everything. So here's a time lapse.
Since the driver board only takes HDMI input, I got one of these active VGA to HDMI converters. It's powered by USB and it also contains a built-in USB sound card that outputs sound over HDMI. So here's what it looks like all put together and set up next to the miniature PC. Normal sized AT tower on the right for comparison. The only thing that's missing is an adjustable stand which I plan on adding eventually but for now I'm just gonna prop it up on a piece of foam and this Game Boy Pocket that I've had since I was a kid but never really used because the screen is so shitty it's essentially unusable. Anyway, size wise the monitor is a pretty good fit for the mini tower looking kind of like a typical 17 inch monitor next to a normal sized PC case. Booting into Windows 98, the first thing I notice is how incredibly sharp the display looks. I mean, it's to be expected, I guess, considering the panel is only eight inches and runs at a 1024 by 768 resolution. But still, I was a little bit surprised seeing it in person. And it's also just neat to see Windows 98 in this tiny format with tiny little windows and itty bitty icons. So what about gaming? Well, no real issue there. I felt like it was a little bit dark, especially in games like Quake, but otherwise perfectly all right. No discernible latency either, as far as I can tell. And of course, this thing will work with any input source as long as it can be converted to HDMI. So here it is, hooked up to my Amiga 1200 power tower. Why not a Power Mac 7600? Now, some of you are probably wondering where you can get the SDL files for this monitor. 
I will make them available, but there are a few things I'd like to tweak first. Some details need adjusting and I'd like to make it a little bit easier to print if I can. Also, like I mentioned, I'd like to add an adjustable stand for it as well. By the way, the Doom level I'm currently playing is one that was recently released by John Romero himself. It's called One Humanity and can be purchased from his website romero.com for 5 euros and the proceeds go to organizations like the Red Cross, supporting the people of Ukraine during the terrible situation that is currently unfolding. So if you're a Doom fan and like to support Ukraine, do go and get this awesome new level. And that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed and if you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Take care, stay safe and see you next time.